With years of experience installing add-ons to cars and trucks, adding lights to a car or truck is not hard for me. So when our good friend Mike asked me to help with installing his new fog lights, I saw no real problem. With the kit he bought on Amazon, this was an absolute breeze. The only problem was there were no instructions included with the kit. But once I sorted out the truck's wiring, the rest of it just fell into place. We received no compensation for the mention of or use of products or companies in this video. The package came from the supplier, well packaged and everything needed. Ballast for the HID lights, the HID lights themselves, a complete wiring harness that had everything laid out in the right place, which really made it easy to work with, a factory switch that plugs into the harness and into one of the factory switch locations, zip ties and screws for the installation, new bezels for the lights, although these weren't specifically needed as the originals were still in good shape, but we replaced them anyway, and the light housings themselves that included halogen bulbs that the HID bulbs replaced. Mike's keeping these as spares in case he needs them. To start, we established how the blanks would be removed and how the light housings would be installed. Looking into the space between the radiator and the grill, we could see the back of the blank and the bezel. The blue tab you see here is what holds the bezel in place, and it just slides out of a hole in the slot on the back of the bezel. Don't lose this tab, as it is not included in the kit. The blank is held in place with two screws, one here and one just below it that are accessed by removing the inner fender behind the bumper. To open up the inner fender, remove these two bolts that you can see here, and it can just be pulled back out of the way. You don't have to remove the whole thing, just pull it back out of the way. You also don't have to remove the wheel if you have stock wheels and tires. Just turn the wheels to the right for the right fender and to the left for the left fender. This is what it looks like with the bezel and blank removed. Putting the light housing and the bezel back in place is the reverse of taking off the old parts and using the new screws to mount the light housing. Next, putting in the wiring harness. This harness has all the connectors, the relay, and fuse holder needed to make this pretty much a plug and play, mostly. I started by laying the harness out on the fenders and grill to keep it from getting tangled. Then I located the main wiring harness grommet going through the firewall next to the brake booster. I just loosened it from the firewall enough to cut a small slit in the flex boot of the grommet. This slit is just large enough to pass the connector for the switch through. Then I passed the connector and wiring harness through the grommet and into the space behind the dashboard and then put the grommet back in place. I used this bolt location here to mount the relay at. It just lined up perfectly. Then I went inside the cab. To access the grommet from inside the cab, I needed to remove the lower dashboard cover. To do this, I removed the fuse block cover by opening it up and then pulling up on the cover. Then I removed the door sill by just prying up on the edge and it just unsnaps. Then gently pulling on the edges of the kick panel until it's unsnapped loose. With the kick panel out of the way, I could access the bolt under it for the lower part of the dashboard. I unscrewed this bolt as well as the other bolt under a cover on the right side, just under the e-brake handle. With these bolts removed, the lower dash cover just unsnaps from the rest of the dash and hangs by the wire harness for the switches that are mounted to it. With all of that out of the way, I could pull enough of the harness through to reach the switch location. The factory location for the switch is in the far left opening. These blanks are a tight fit, so it had to be pried out with two screwdrivers, one on top and one on the bottom. But with the blank removed, we could pass the harness up through the dash, behind the fuse block, and through the hole, then then just plug the switch into the connector and snap the switch into place in the hole. The red wire is meant to be attached to the low beam circuit, but Mike wanted it to be used as both a daytime running light and off-road use. So we connected this red wire to the ignition power circuit with a wire tap on the blue wire with yellow stripe. With the dash wiring done, we just reversed the process of taking it apart and then moved to connecting the wires up front. We ran the wire harness to the battery first, then we ran the rest of the harness to each of the light locations. At each location, the connectors plug into the ballast first 
and then the wires from the ballast connect to the lights. With everything connected, we secured the ballast to the support for the grill with the double-sided tape and zip ties. This project took about three hours to complete. That's including the pictures and the video. And Mike is very happy with the amount of light that comes from these lights. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also check out our other videos.